Hey everybody, Mark here. How are you doing today? It is a great day today, although I can't go riding. So yeah, I mean, there's probably about 12 inches of snow on the driveway. There's no way I can get it out on the street, but we're going to do a little bit of bike maintenance today. And what we're going to do is something I wanted to do actually last year, but I never got around to it because my gas tank uh, started leaking. So I figured it was more important to take care of the gas tank than uh, this project, which is changing the fork oil. Quick disclaimer, okay? I am not a mechanic. I do not get paid to work on motorcycles. I do not work in a shop, okay? I am just Joe Schmo having a shot at doing something on his own bike. This is my bike. This is my garage. This is where I'm going to do the work, okay? So please don't sit there and hoot and holler at me that I did something wrong and all this other stuff. Again, I am not a professional. Go ahead and ask me a question about it. I'll try to give you the best answer I can, but don't rely on just me, okay? If there's a serious problem, talk to a qualified mechanic. Okay guys, so the first thing I want to do is take off my windscreen, and there's four bolts holding it on. One here, one here. Now, you gotta remember, my bike is a classic, okay? I don't have a Nomad. So this is an aftermarket um, windscreen. So if you have a Nomad, it might be a little different on taking it off, but all I gotta do is and remove these two bolts on this side and two more on the other side. Sockets might work better. Okay. Yeah, that's a little bit better. <laughs> All right, so there's my bolt along with my washer right there. Get this one off down here. Right, there we go. Now the bottom on my windscreen, the bottom bolt is a little bit longer than my top bolt. Just wanted to break them both loose before I took them all the way out. Okay, so there's my top one. I'm going to hold my windshield so it doesn't fall to the ground. Then just should lift right off. Okay, since I'm still on the right side of the bike, I'm going to take off my caliper here. I'll go over on the other side, take off that caliper. Now you got to remember this is up. Uh, 12 millimeter bolts that hold these on. That was actually quite easy. So there's my caliper bolts. Take it off. The uh, <laughs> lines are a bit colder than, than before. So, okay, since I'm having a hard time getting the caliper off, and I think it's because it's just so cold, I can't really seem to move it how I want to and drop it down as far as I would like, because everything is just kind of shrunk up in the cold. So I'm just going to leave that sit there and I'm going to take out these two um, Allen key bolts. And the reason for that is to take the front fender off. Oh, good golly. I'm going the right way, right? <laughs> I don't think I've ever had these bolts out before, so. There we go. Whew, those were quite tight. Get this other one. <laughs> All right, since I'm also on this side, and probably what I should have done in the first place is I'm going to undo these pinch bolts and take out the axle, drop the front wheel. I should have probably done that first. Oh, those are sixes as well. Yep, that's a six. Okay, now again, just like when we uh, took off the tire for changing, uh, we don't have to take them all the way out. All we gotta do is just loosen them. So nice and loose. All right, I gotta go get um, 
my sockets to put on that. There we go. Oh, my spacers dropped, which is fine. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I got this really long uh, zip tie. I'm going to feed it through there, and I'm just going to zip tie it to my engine guard here, just to take the weight off. I don't want the weight sitting on the uh, hose, so that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side with this zip tie. All right, now I'm going to take off the rest of the fender. Right, I'm going to break this one free before I take that bolt completely out. All right, there's that. I'll feed it down. Okay, that's the way to do it. I'm going to get my 12 back on here and we'll, there we go, there's that one loose, and there's that one loose. Okay, now same thing, put the zip tie through here, and I'm going to zip tie it to the engine guard just to take the weight off the the hose just like that I think I got a little more time before that I think the poochie will be awake so we need to take off the headlight let's do that all right so to take the headlight off there are two screws one here and then one on the other side as well just a Phillips head is all you need so there's one screw right there because of the brakes being done up and held up, the um, handlebars don't want to turn the way I want them to. That's right. I wish these things were threaded all the way to the end, but they're not. So because the screw has this unthreaded part right here at the top, so that's why it's hard to get that out. If it was threaded all the way out, it would be better, but they make it easier to align the hole because of that. Okay, now with those two screws out, I should just be able to pull it off. All right, so then right down here is the wiring, and I cannot remember how to actually take this out. Um, okay, so here's the wiring going into the light, and we got this black boot that kind of covers up the opening here okay so we got to take that black boot and we're going to actually roll it back there we go we roll it back on our itself and then down here there's a little i don't know if i can show you this but there's a little wire that you just push down and it comes unclipped there we go yeah so this is the wire and it the uh, bracket for the light bulb this metal part here sits down on this little shelf right here and then this kind of spring spring holds it on and then this spring here hooks underneath this little part right here so you're pushing that down and it comes out and then you push it up and then you can take the bulb off. Okay, and I, I don't think this is gonna work out very well for you to see, but down here at the bottom of the uh, cowling for your headlight, there's a little bracket with three bolt heads in there. And we gotta take those out. 10 millimeter. And that's one. There's two. That one was actually kind of loose. Now it's three. Now this one over here, 
on mine I've got a little ground wire there and I think it's for my auxiliary power for charger cable for my phone or something so I'll have to remember to put that wire back all right so there are my three bolts that I just took out <laughs> now let's see if I can uh, squeeze all these wires through there we go taking some time but I'm getting it oh finally whoo I right, got the bucket off that's good so yeah that's the tangled web of wires and stuff that I was trying to feed through this little tiny hole and I ended a bunch of these clips I didn't want to undo all these single ones because I was afraid I wouldn't get them back together where they're supposed to so got the bucket off though that's good there was this little kind of I don't know bracket clip whatever you want to call it and that fed through this little spot right here where that little hole is right there it actually fed through and kind of clipped in there and that way it holds everything in place I'm gonna actually take this inside and polish it up real good okay so now this front cowling piece can come off same thing just kind of push all the wires through so there's the front cowling piece right there these two screws and this screw are the brackets that hold the forks in place and I'm not sure exactly what size they are my guess is that they're an eight well that one's not that's a lot smaller this one down here yeah that one's definitely an eight and we'll try the six millimeter up here yep okay so six out on the top eight down here on the bottom no. oh look who, look who came to see me guys yeah this is missy this is my bloodhound yeah and she's growing up she no don't you don't want that like no 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 okay good girl yeah she's been a cutie she's been a hellion but she's also been a cutie <laughs> okay now i'm going to do the top ones first small little breaker bar on there all right I'll do the other one here excellent excellent all right now i don't have to take them all the way out i just need them loose okay okay so the next thing i need to do now is take this uh i think it's called a uh a top plug is what they call it i think or a plug screw or something i don't know i can't remember it was a plug something um get a 22 millimeter okay 22 we'll get that on there there we go now I just want to loosen these I don't I don't taking it all the way off okay so that's basically all I'm going to do and I'm also trying to uh, figure out exactly where this um, lines up and everything so I can put it back in the right place so I'm saying that that's probably just like one or two millimeter from the top of the triple tree. So that's what I can do there. Now I'll come over here and do the same thing. Again, not very tight. Uh, I think these only get torqued down to like uh, 16 foot pounds or something like that. So not very tight at all. there we go that's nice and loose that one's nice and loose all right so now i can go ahead and loosen up these uh lower clamps all right now i got to be careful because once i undo this one the whole shock could fall out so i just got to be a little more mindful of it all right now yep see now it just slides right out 
there we go. So that is one shock out. Do a little cleanup on there. And then uh, we'll take the cap off and uh, empty out all the old oil. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm unscrewing the top of the plug. And you gotta be careful because this is under a little bit of pressure, so it might pop. All right, it's gotta be getting close now. There we go. All right, that wasn't too bad. And there's my spacer, okay. Now I'm gonna pour the oil out into here. Now I got my spring in here yet, so I'm gonna kinda, just got my, finger sitting here to catch it in case it starts sliding out. Yep, there comes the spring. There's a washer there. There's my spring. Just sit there and let it drip dry. Just giving it a few pumps just to pump out any of the uh, any leftover oil in there. And again, I will just leave this sit and drain for a while. All right, there we go. And again, I'm just going to leave the just gonna leave that sit for now. I'm gonna run, I got, I ran out of towels out here, the little uh, paper towels. I got some more inside, I'm gonna go grab a roll. Okay guys, so what I'm doing now is, uh, I've still got my shock off sitting right here, I'm just draining away. But I figured I'd pull out my book and check out the specs, make sure that my spring is still in good shape. So I wanna make sure that it is at full length and it's a little over five, uh, 15 inches, not five inches, 15 inches. And that's where I'm at. I'm like at a 15, between a 16th and uh, an eighth. So yeah, uh, that, my specs on that are just fine. I don't have to worry about that. So my springs are good. Okay, so now all I gotta do is measure out the amount of oil I need. This is the oil that I'm using, okay? Maxima, I don't care about the brand, but you want a 10 weight uh, fork oil. Okay, fork oil, 10 weight. Got it? Good. Now, how much do I need? Fork oil capacity. All right, so this says I need 445 milliliters. How am I going to measure milliliters? Okay guys, I went in the kitchen and I grabbed this measuring cup and luckily it's got milliliter measurements on here. So, there's my 450 right there. So I figured just below the line and that's my 445. That's right, right? I lost my page. Yeah, 445. And you also got to make sure that you're looking at the right type of bike because there's an A, a B, a D, an E models, and a G model. So you got to make sure that you're looking at the right stuff. I believe mine is an A model. So that's what I'm going with. And each of them are different. So if it's, uh, if you got a B and F model, um, <laughs> it's even harder because they're saying that the fork uh, oil is different on each side, not by much, but a little bit. D and G models are dry, are different. And that's different on each side. 
So yeah, be very careful on how much you need to put in. Like I said, I'm thinking that I have the right one. I believe mine is an A model. So that's what I'm going with. So 445 milliliters. All right, I wanna make sure that this is nice and level. Wow, that's pretty clear compared to what came out of it. All right, I'm gonna say that that's my 445. Put that cap back on. Now there's actually another way that you can actually measure this. You know what, I wanted to clean this off before I put it all back together. So let me grab a couple of things of paper towel quick. There's another way that you can actually measure your oil and that is by how full the uh, system is. So once you have your spring in, the spacer in the little uh, washer there, you get all that in and then you can get like a, well, just like a syringe, but you have to be very precise on how far down that syringe goes and then you can just suck up anything that's extra. Okay, luckily I've had no issues with oil leaking. This is just degreaser. I've had no problems with oil leaking, so my seals are still good. I don't have to worry about doing that. So, yep, just a little wipe down, get all that stuff off of there. You know, all this is hidden behind uh, a little protective doohickey. And so I don't really get to see this area all too often. Okay, there we go. That's nice and clean now. Now, let's see. I'm going to hold this. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to give it a couple more pumps just to make sure. Okay, that looks all good. So, I don't know if there's a way to do it, if you're supposed to put the spring in first and then pour the oil in, but I'm just gonna put the oil in right away. I can hear it gurgling in there. <laughs> Dribbled a little down, get that cleaned up. I suppose technically I should have probably measured all the way up to the uh, four, four, the 450 line because there's going to be a little bit that's still in the container. All right, but then I can put my spring in and there, the spring can go in either way. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have an up and a down. Put the washer in, make sure it's, it's in there. There we go. You want to make sure, oh, see if I can get you to see. So you can see the washer down there. You want to make sure it's laying flat and not sticking, you know, up sideways. Now with my spring and washer in there, I'm gonna pump this a little bit and get some air bubbles out. I don't know how many times you need to do this. I'm gonna do it maybe 10. Kind of lost count. <laughs> I really don't know how many I've done. I'd say that's probably 10 though. All right, then I can put my spacer in there. Gotta figure out how to do this now. All right, I think I got it. Yeah, I got it. Okay. 
Now I can take my 22 millimeter, not gun. And oh, another thing that I forgot to say too, um, there's a little O-ring that's right at the cap here. Make sure that's in good shape too. I am going to tighten it down as tight as I can get it by hand and that's not very tight because because the oils on my hand are just going to make it impossible for me to hold it. All right, let's get this back on the bike. All right, so same way we took it off, we're going to put it right back in again. Feed it up through there. Feed it up there. Up there. All right, now I'm just going to try to hold this just in the right spot where I think it was last time. Might be a little low, but all right. And you don't have to worry about making sure this is all straight and level with anything because it rotates. So when we go to put the wheel on, it'll fix it. All right, let me uh, tighten up this one here. I wanna make sure that these are really nice and snug. I don't know the torque specs on it, but all right. So now I can take my, my 22 again, 22 millimeter. Stick that one in my back pocket. And now I can finish tightening it up. And you want to tighten it up first before you tighten this up, okay? Because this is going to put a lot of uh, tension on the cylinder here, and you don't want that. So tighten this up first, then we'll tighten up the uh, triple tree. Just like that. There we go. That's one done. Now I gotta do the same thing to the other side. All right, now remember I already loosened up this one, so I don't need this bit anymore. I need to have the bigger one. Okay, so that's the one. I got the hold of the shock just in case it falls out. I will go back through these and just double check the tightness on everything. So, yep, here it comes. Do -do 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 -do. All right, there we go. All right, same thing. Let's get over there. Take out my spacer. Gonna start pouring out the oil. Gonna put my finger there for when the spring and the washer start sliding down. And there we go. Now give this a few pumps. Okay, since the shock is still draining, let's go ahead and measure out our 445 milliliters. All right, so there's my 450 mark right there. Okay, again, while well, it's still draining and I've already got my oil pre-measured. So I'm gonna quickly measure this. Looks like it's 15 and 1 16th. So we're good. Okay, I think that's enough draining. I'm not getting anything else dripping out of the bottom of it here. I'm gonna spray this down and get it cleaned up. All right, now I want to show you guys this real quick. Hopefully, you can see it. There's some uh, rust and stuff on the fork, and that is actually quite normal to see because you know it's not something that people 
clean out and lube up or anything like that. So don't be surprised if you see a little bit of rust there. So I'm going to pour my oil in nice and slow. Again, I don't know if you're supposed to do this with the spring in or not. I know that if you take a uh, height measurement on your oil amount instead of uh, measuring it out by by the fluid metric here then you have to do it with the spring in okay there we go now I can take my spring that in there okay got it got it to where it's sitting level and not straight up and down put my spacer in all right again I'm just going to tighten it up best I can by hand and then I'll do the finish tightening tightening when it's on the bike all right so there's that all right looks good let's get it on the bike Okay, there we go. That one's nice and snug. That one's nice and snug. Okay, so before I tighten this one up, of course, I got to tighten up the the head. All right, there we go. That's nice and tight. Now I'll take my socket. And we'll start tightening this one up. There we go. So that's all tight. Forks are all mounted again. And now I gotta run inside, check on the dog, see if she's awake or not. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'll be right back. Okay, so we're going to start by putting this down here, getting all this wire bundle pushed through the hole. Kind of take your time with it because the edge on this is actually quite sharp. So that's how that will fit on there like that. Just double check and make sure everything is good and then I got everything pulled through and it looks good now this is the harder one because the hole is a bit smaller I think I got it push this little mounting bracket into that hole there we go all right I gotta go get my bolts here. I got that one. Got that one, and then this one here. I wrap a wire around it for a ground for my auxiliary. All right. Okay, so that's all good. I told you guys to, how to take off the uh, light. You did not have to do that. After I got it all apart, I realized I just wasn't pulling on the plug hard enough. So, while we're here though, let me show you. All right, so this goes open like that. All these little finger tabs here all line up one way. 
just like that. And then you'll take this and you'll push this down. And it goes down on both sides. Okay, so there's the wire right there. And I'm pushing on this side over here. And then I just push that into there like that. And then the boot can be put back over. And there's the plug. So yeah, just pull on that pretty hard and you'll just unplug it. You don't have to worry about actually taking the light bulb out. All right, now where is the plug for the light bulb? It only gets plugged in one way. There are three prongs, and so you cannot mess it up. There, nice and tight. Now there is a little bit of a hook right here at the top. So you put the, uh, the cowling onto that and then you just kind of push it in. Just gonna put these screws in. There's that one. There's that one. I'm double check this one again just to make sure it's nice and tight. Okay, so now I gotta get the uh, tire on. Take this. Get the axle started. Take my spacer and the uh, big um, end over here goes on towards the forks. Just like that. Go like that. Right, push that through. It's coming out on the other side. Get the other spacer here. There we go. There we go. Now it's going in. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I was going to check the bearings real quick, but uh, decided against it. All right, now I'm going to snug it, but I'm going to leave it like that until I get the bike all the way down to the ground, okay? I think my bearings are fine because uh, I'm not hearing any clunking or anything so so everything should be good all right so let's get the zip ties down get the uh, uh, brake calipers on first and then we'll put the fender on last now this all right this bracket here actually goes up onto the uh, fender but what I want to do first spread those brake shoes apart the pads there we go so that make sure you grab your brake mounting bolts not the fender mounting bolts and again you could torque these down right now but uh I might wait until I get the bike all the way onto the ground and then torque it. That way I don't have it wiggling on the, on the stand. Okay, same thing on this side. Spread the brake shoes apart. You can snaggle it on. There's that one. There's that one. Time to get the the front fender on it. All right, same way we took it off. Come up through the back side. Go right there. Now, the bracket for the reflector here has actually got the nut we need for the mounting of it. So, you can stick the bolt all the way through that way we don't have to sit there and hold the fender itself. So you know I can let go of the fender and it's going to stay there. I can take my little 6 mil, line up the brackets onto the bolt, and I can just start tightening these up just snugly. I just want to barely get them started. Okay. 
Okay, that one started. I don't like the way that this one felt, so I'm going to back it off. Give it another shot here. Oh, that's better. That feels a lot better. Just going to snug it again. I'm not going very tight with it at all. Not at all. Alright guys, I want to try to show you exactly what's going on with the fender and how it all mounts onto the bolt, okay? So, this passes through. This is the fender here. Okay, so I can push... I can push the bolt all the way through that hole. And then back here, hopefully you can see that. Back here is the bracket for the reflector back here. And I can just put that on and get it going. I don't want to get that too snug because now I got to do the back side. Back side is pretty much the same. Put it through there. Move the fender just a little bit. Then we got to find the hole for the for the bracket. Okay, so that's that's snug. Now I can go ahead and tighten these up. I want them pretty tight, so. Now they're tight, but they're not super tight. Same thing on this side, you just snug them up. And get them nice and tight. There we go. All right, now to uh, do up the caliper bolts, to tighten up the axle, and the uh, axle pinch bolts are here on the other side. I'm going to lower the bike down to take care of all that. So let's do it. I'm going to pull my safety. And then just slowly, slowly bring it down. I did make sure that my kickstand was down on the other side too. Okay, we'll start with the uh, caliper bolts. Make sure that these get nice and tight. <sighs> Very tight. Okay, we're on to the other side now. And again, just nice and tight. There we go. All right, time for the axle. Okay, now to properly set the axle, you're supposed to stand up on it and you're supposed to kind of push up and down on your bike. And you get that wheel to kind of bounce around and you find that little sweet spot. So you don't want the axle real tight just yet. Okay, I think that'll be enough. Now we'll give it the final snugs. Again, not too tight, okay? You don't want to bind up your bearings. So that's all I'm going to do with that. Take off that socket, put on this Allen wrench. And then we tighten up the pinch bolts. Just like that. That's all you need. These pinch bolts are not very tight because the uh, pressure of the, uh, the metal down here wants to kind of come out. So that's what keeps them nice and tight. So you don't need 90 foot-pounds of pressure on those uh, pinch bolts, okay? Just nice and snug. But I suggest going back and forth on them a couple of times and just really making sure that they're all snug. All right, guys, now all I got to do is just put my windshield back on. And we are done. Ha! What do you think of that? This one goes here. That socket goes there. 
These go down in my other toolbox. But there you go, guys. That's it. We have changed the front fork oil. Yes! It wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. It, it's a lot of removing stuff. You know, removing that cowling to get to the, uh, the pinch bolts for the triple tree. But short of that, it was actually quite easy. I, I was impressed. You know, undoing the fork, just dumping out the oil and stuff. That was like nothing. It really was. But yeah, it, it takes a while. You take off the front tire, take off the brakes, take off the fender, take off the fairings and the windshield. Then you can finally start actually t getting the shocks off, you know, so. <sighs> but yeah, I feel much better knowing that I've got fresh oil in those uh, front shocks. It seemed to me like they were getting really quite clunky. And so I'm hoping that the new oil will give me a better ride. I'm sure it will. Now all I gotta do is wait for all this freaking snow to melt so I can go for a ride. <laughs> all right guys, thanks for watching. I will see you guys on the road.